Hey, welcome back to the videos. This is part two in the Reuben uh, revisiting set of videos. And we looked at the low break in the previous video. Now let's go up the neck. Reuben up the neck is one of those tunes, whenever you think about playing banjo up the neck as a traditional bluegrass banjo player, Reuben is one of those songs that you know is going to feature some really cool up the neck stuff, kind of like Sally Gooden in the key of A. Everybody associates the Scruggs break to Sally Gooden to being up the neck and Reuben is no different. Reuben is one of those go-to songs for up the neck stuff. It's going to involve some pretty advanced choking techniques and some syncopated roll patterns and not playing rolls at all but just mixing chokes and single notes together. So again the assumption here is you can already play a standard version of the up the neck break and I'll just see if I can add some ideas to that. So here's the solo. where players will take liberties with the chokes, they'll add filler notes in different places. So let's start with just the standard approach, staying within the confines of kind of stroke style. Let me give you a few ideas to kind of spice up what you're already doing. Uh, the tenth fret and the seventh fret of the second string are your two primary choke points, but we can play around with some of the other notes we're adding the way we come in and out of the positions. One thing that I like to do that gives it a little extra umph is uh, on the G turnaround section at the end of the uh, B part of the neck, you'll have that transition to a G chord. You know, and most players would tend to just walk into the G, go to the first string, go right to the seventh fret of the first string, and then the choke at seven on the second, and then tag it down low. Sometimes I like to add this, which is adding some more blues to the position. And then instead of going to that note alone for a choke, I'll actually choke this position. And this is really similar to detuning to what you would do in G tuning at the 11th and 12th fret. So if you're playing a song in the key of G, let's say for example, using the Sally Gooden position, if you take those two notes and sliding, slide them up uh, three frets, then you'll get a partial G minor chord which serves as blues, as for a blues position. You can transpose that idea to here, and this is kind of a detuning version of what you would do in G tuning here at 11 and 12. And of course you can move those two notes in a set of strings like to move it, you know, because we talked about detuning is the same as G, just everything moved up one string. But I'm going to stick with this since it correlates to this G lick, that I'm just going to go right to the 8th fret of the 2nd. And then I'm going to choke both of these notes, actually pinch them together and choke the 2nd string a little more than the 1st. And there's a subtle little thing you can do here with the walk up the neck. You can actually, you know, walk back and forth between 10 and 12 on the first string. So do a pull off. So that's a subtle little thing. Uh, one of my favorite licks is actually taken from another genre of music, uh, but the note placement on the fingerboard is going to be from the 12th fret to the 10th fret of all the strings. So I'm going to do this as an exercise. I'm going to walk across from 12 to 10, 12 to 10, 12 to 10, 12 to 10. That is 
a great area for kind of some blues exploration. Has a kind of a throwback late 60s, early 70s rock vibe too. But here's here's a lick that I'll throw out for you that you can mix into the to the uh, solo that you're doing. So the pattern is four, three, three, two, two. Again, working from twelve to ten to twelve to ten. Then backtracking from the high string. Which is one, one, two, two, three, three, four. So you're going from the fourth string over to the first, from the first string back over to the fourth. And this is coming from uh, J.D. Crow's version of Reuben back in the early 70s. And at any point you can leave there, you can go into some kind of standard tag. So here might be a version I would play with those J.D. Crow ideas added. what JD did but if you play around with these positions and again the chords in Reuben you're playing over the chords so you can have some freedom to kind of ride over the chord changes not worry about changing chords on the banjo let the rest of the jam or the group you're playing with play the chords and you just kind of comp over top of them you can sit here and uh, doodle and that becomes a, a focal point for you to solo over 10 and 12 Of course, you have to have a pretty good sense of overall timing and rhythm to make these different patterns work. But if you just sit there and get in a cycle like a loop, play around with the duration of the notes, syncopation of the patterns, you'll find an endless stream of notes sitting right here. Now, one thing I also like to do is uh, play some melodic patterns in the key of D here with D tuning, which is not as hard as you would think. It requires you to think a little differently as far as your finger placements go for the left hand, but playing melodically on the banjo and D tuning is not really that hard, and it gives you a whole new vibe for Reuben. So one position you can experiment with uh, playing rolling patterns over is the second and the first string both at 10, playing the open fifth string gives you kind of that melodic vibe. So you can add that sound into your rolling patterns. And this is a big uh, kind of pentatonic blues pattern that you can play over uh, D here at the end of the uh, solo you can come back on the repeat of the, of the neck break and that's a very very cool way of getting uh, some melodic uh, sounds over detuning for Reuben and again you're just playing that scale pattern that pentatonic blues pattern over the top of all the chords in the tune so there's no chords involved for you because you're soloing now what I'm doing is playing, as you can see in the video, the first string at uh, 5, the second string at 7, and it's a dedicated roll pattern, 1, 5, 2, and then I'm going to start releasing notes, this note will be released, but the roll pattern stays the same, 1, 5, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, so once you get the roll going, 
just let it perpetuate itself. And at some point I'm going to switch to the third string at five and then roll three, two, one. So I'm switching to a different forward roll pattern. This is one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. And at some point you will break into this set of notes, which is three, two, one. every note except this and you're still three two one and then you're going to switch to this note the four string at five and then it switches to an inside roll of four three two so you're slowly dissolving the positions away switching to different notes all in a pattern that starts this way and then goes this way from this two note position to the to the four string at five then the open three and two and then I'll wind up here which is a blues note F and then open now I'm not going to tell you note for note every pattern I'm playing but if you experiment with this and if you're familiar with the concept of a four note melodic scale pattern this is a four or a 32 note if you were to tab this out It'd be 32 notes in a measure if you get it going and you keep it uh, regenerating itself. You'll have 32 note patterns here that is basically just a blues pentatonic uh, melodic idea over the chords in Rubin. section of the up the neck break over any I mean you slice it dice it like we've talked about in the other videos you can break those patterns up into fragments you don't have to play continual 32 note strings over these positions you can stop at any point then go back Break up the the predictable patterns for Reuben playing the same shows, the same roles, the same positions through the whole thing. So if you break that those patterns up, you can even reverse directions, which I've done on occasion. And then you'll you'll be moving instead of descending uh, four note scale patterns, you'd have ascending patterns, which gives you some pretty cool ideas. Again, it's the same notes I used previously, 5th fret of the 4th string, 6th fret of the 3rd string, 7th fret of the 2nd string, 5th fret of the 1st string, and you just mix those notes in any way you like. So that'll wrap up this video. This will wrap up Reuben. Hopefully some of these ideas will spur you on to even create some much cooler things than I've done here in this little short video. But have fun with that, and uh, we'll see you on the next Revisit Tune. Thanks.